Hello Electroheads, I'm Cole and usually I'm behind the camera directing Ailish, Richard, monitoring the sound levels and making sure everything is okay. The butt doesn't make sense to have done the class and joke. <laughs> Today, I've taken the initiative to switch roles and present to you a video about electric motorcycles. From the age of nine, I've been riding motorcycles and eventually graduated to racing them. And it occurred to me that Electrohads haven't once spoken about electric motorcycles on the channel. Now, since you've clicked on this video, I'm going to assume that you're interested in motorcycles and have some level of experience riding them. So to make things a little more entertaining, I thought I'd show you a few clips of me at the peak of my career in racing motorcycles. Clearly, clearly professional. <laughs> Even though I've been quite active in the motorcycle space, it occurred to me that not once have I come across an electric one on the streets of London. And looking at the sales figures, it would appear that the industry of electric motorcycles has somewhat flopped. Just doing a quick YouTube search, all I could find was top five reasons why electric motorcycles suck. Why electric motorcycles are failing. Why electric motorcycles suck. Honestly, just, Calm down. Daddy, chill. I'm here to tell you another perspective and attempt to change your mind. So here are five reasons why I think you should give the electric motorcycle a go. Number one. Power! Okay. From what I gather, electric motorcycles just make sense. The biggest thrill about riding a motorcycle is the power to weight ratio. It's just you and an engine between your legs. Cheeky. There's no denying that there's plenty of space of improvement in the area of electrification. But at the end of the day, we're currently at the early stage of electric vehicle development. And I think we've already made huge progress and there are plenty of exciting toys to be had. And from here on, it's only gonna get better. Take the first iPhone, for example. It revolutionized the way we perceived what a mobile device should do. And fast forward just 10 years, and look where we are. I think the EV space will progress even faster than the iPhone did, or for those Android fans, the mobile phone did. Better. Surprisingly, a number of motorcycle enthusiasts that I know actually swear by them. And they've test ridden them, they've bought one, and they love them. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've actually ridden an electric motorcycle, or maybe even if you own one. I'm eager to get as much feedback from those who have any kind of experience riding them. So please do let me know. Personally, I've never ridden one, but just applying the experience I have driving an electric car or an electric bicycle, receiving peak power and peak torque instantly from zero RPM must feel bonkers. This to me is very intriguing because unlike a car, motorcycle riding involves 100% rider engagement to control the thing. I would argue cars do a lot of the driving for you. They have so many aids like assistive braking, assistive lane control, assistive steering, whereas with a motorcycle, there's only so much you can add. At the end of the day, it's just you and two wheels and your body weight shifting the direction of the bike. Look, I get it. A lot of you are going to disagree and say, there's no comparison. These bikes don't even have any sound. And yes, I will probably agree with you to an extent because there is nothing like the sound of your two or three or four cylinder engine just popping and banging right next to you. This is a huge deal to us bikers and it's significant enough for many of us to not even consider going E. I get it, but I've been watching quite a few YouTube videos on these electric bikes and because of their minimal design, they actually produce quite a lot of motor noise. It's a bit like Formula E. At first, I didn't really think much of it, but then I attended one of their races and the sound they made is insane. And the same applies to electric motorcycles. They're not exactly as silent as electric cars, but they still output quite a lot of noise. I am impressed. That video alone makes me really want to have a go on that cake bike on some trails. Look, uh, of course, it doesn't come close to like a two-stroke or a four-stroke scrambler engine, but, but if it outputs the power more efficiently and with more punch, it might just make up for it. Then you're gonna say, but it doesn't have any gears. F the gears. Who gives a damn what gear you're in or how it feels to pull that clutch in, shift up a gear with your toe, let go of that clutch and crank that throttle and propel yourself through the air into a corner, feeling like Superman and... 
<sighs> yeah, that kind of is a lot of fun. Yeah, I know, there's none of that on electric bikes, but let's see how I feel when I get on one of these bikes. Speaking of which, what should I try first? Do you have any recommendations? Naturally, I want to get myself on some green lanes, on some off-roader, but, but I'm equally as interested to see what the road bikes have to offer. My intuition says they'll take me by surprise. Number two. No maintenance headache. This is a huge one for many riders. I spent half my racing career fixing bikes and taking them apart and rebuilding engines and constantly having to fix something. And guess what? It costs money, time and effort and knowledge. That's a big one. Internal combustion bikes require a lot more maintenance because they're small capacity, high output engines and it only makes sense that they need to be looked after more than let's say a car. You have to make sure that you warm up your engine first before you go anywhere and that very engine and clutch and brakes and cooling system, they all require liquid to either lubricate or provide some kind of pressure. Then you've got the valve clearance check, that alone sometimes is engine out and you have to change the air filter, and then there's the big deal when it comes to the battery. Nothing worse than wanting to go for a ride, and guess what, your battery's dead. This happens way too often on motorcycles, and there's nothing you can do. And then you have to lubricate your chain, you have to tighten it, you have to change your sprockets. E-bikes have none of that. More often than not, e-bikes are belt driven, so that goes out the window. Oh, and then there's the brake pads. I swear I change them like twice a year. Electric bikes use regen to re re regen re regen re regenerative E-bikes use regenerative braking, so therefore they don't really need to change the brakes that often at all. Look, the list goes on and on. There are so many benefits to having an e-bike over an internal combustion bike. It gives you so much peace of mind. Just hop on your bike and off you go, as long as you've charged it. It's reliable. It requires no prep, no maintenance, apart from the obvious ones, but it's headache free. It's as simple as that. I'm sure as a biker, you'll know maintaining your bike takes a lot of time and effort and actually money. And when it comes to off-road bikes, it's even worse. The engines are even smaller capacity and they're tuned to put out as much power as possible. And guess what? It stresses them out, so you have to rebuild them all the freaking time. Recently, I've been thinking about getting myself another green lane bike just to have a bit of fun. And to be honest, I just don't want the hassle of having to maintain it all the time. That's why I'm thinking about just getting an electric one, like that cake. Number three. They're quiet. I know, this is for many of you a massive turnoff, but I'm an old man now, and I find something really cool about blasting down a road and being quieter than the wind. Coppers don't hear you coming, and your neighbors don't hate you, and the peaceful countryside stays noise-free. Imagine a world where all road vehicles are completely silent. I genuinely can't wait for that day to come. Well, I mean, one day. Not right now. <laughs> Number four, it's so cheap. A full charge on your motorcycle will cost so much less in energy bills than it would at a petrol station. On top of this, there are so many government incentives on taxes and other motorbike related fees. So while you might be paying more at the beginning, you'll easily recover this money and go on to making massive savings each and every year. And because electric motorcycles are so easy to maintain and have just one moving part, you'll also save money on service, repairs, and maintenance, like we mentioned earlier. Number five, regulations. Just like cars, internal combustion bikes have so many restrictions just to comply with the emissions regulations. They have catalytic converters, they have baffles, they have OPF filters, O2 sensors, they have a sensor for everything. All of that just to comply with emission regulations. And you can only imagine the restriction it puts on the performance of these bikes. Electric bikes have none of this. It's literally a battery, a motor, and two wheels, and off you go. And if you have an A2 license with a restriction, you can just program the bike to meet those requirements. And then the day you pass your full test, off you go, your bike is ready to go. Look, ultimately what I'm getting at here is that there are plenty of upsides to using and buying yourself an electric motorcycle. I get it, I too love the sound of my exhaust when I get on that throttle and I love shifting gears. Motorcycles have such great character to them and because of that, I'm unlikely to completely get rid of my ICE bikes. But that doesn't mean that I'm opposed to the idea of an electric motorcycle in my garage. Just like car enthusiasts, motorcyclists tend to pick a side. I'm not telling you to entirely switch to an electric motorcycle right now. Technology is still developing and we'll get there. 
but trying them out now won't hurt. I personally have two reasons why I want to start using them. One of them is to commute in the city, I live in London, and number two is riding them in the green lanes where it's peaceful and quiet and because I'll do it as a hobby, I don't really want to have the headache of maintenance. So all I have to say to you is before judging and making your decision, go out there and try one, see what you think. And if you do, please do let me know down here in the comments, reach out to me, I'd love to have a chat to you about it. Before you know it, I will have tried one and I'm hoping that I can film it for you guys too. Like I said, I haven't even ridden one yet, but I have a positive outlook towards it and the idea definitely does excite me. I definitely see myself riding one of these electric bikes off-road. And we must remember that the technology behind it is only going to get better with time. Different generations are going to feel very differently about this. Newer generations will be brought into a world where ICE doesn't even exist, and therefore they won't know any other way. For that reason, I'm going to enjoy both while I can. Okay, now that we've had a chat about these futuristic talk machines, please let me know down below what you think about these bikes. But I ask you kindly, please go easy on each other. This topic is hot and I get it. Not everybody likes it. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you very soon.